we have our special guest? Erin? Okay. Yes, I'm here. Wow, 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 wow. So you're real. You're real. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everyone. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you for okay. thank you for coming on board. Thank you for taking the time to actually come and share your your testimony and your message with us because there's a lot of people out there that would love to hear more about what happened and how it happened and the journey. Yeah. So do you want to just uh, talk to us a little bit, um, Vivian, just uh, just introduce yourself a little bit? Okay. Um, I'm Vivian. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm Vivian Okonta. Yeah. So, well, I'm from, <laughs> I'm from Delta States and uh, um, I've been in the UK since uh, last year and um, that, that's about me. Um, so last week um, I had the opportunity to to meet with uh, Mr. Tony and in the course of our discussion, I, you know, kind of shared, because I, tri I traveled to Nigeria and I spent quite some time uh, before I returned. I just returned a couple of weeks ago and I kind of shared, you know, the reasons why I spent quite some time in Nigeria. Now, so, and that was how the story came about. So, okay. um, so I would start with, um, well, sometime last year. Um, so Vivian, Vivian, let me just, in, I like how Vivian just said she had the chance to meet with me. Um, I, I think, I think I was, I was actually, uh, it was actually International Women's Day that day I came around. Yeah. Uh, is that, that that's right wasn't it international yes, women's day yes yes, that, that yes. Came that women's day. And I, I remember um vivian was expecting her salad master yes i was expecting my salad master cookware <laughs> delivery isn't it and, and and you were saying you were wondering okay when is this cookware coming am i right yeah yes, and yes. finally you heard the doorbell ring yeah and what did you what did you think when you heard the doorbell ring? <laughs> When I had the doorbell ring, I actually thought it was the delivery man who was yeah. delivering my parcel, you know, because uh, Mr. Tony had assured me that he was going to send it via Korea and it was going to arrive the following day. So so I, I was at home. I was working from home that day. And uh, when, so I immediately I had the doorbell. I was like, oh, that must be the delivery delivery man. And when I opened the door, to my greatest surprise, it was Mr. Tony <laughs> with the parcel himself. <laughs> you know, so I was really surprised. Um, it was quite a pleasant surprise. And um, yeah, I wasn't, <clears throat> I wasn't expecting to see him. And uh, so um, he came yeah. in and uh, we had... You know, we talked. We talked for a while. We had a conversation, and you know, along the line, along the line, I shared, you know, the story. You know, all of the reasons why I, you know, because he kept on asking. The thing is, I I was meant to come back to the UK um, last year, but I kept on prolonging it. Prolong, you know, I kept on extending it, and he was it was waiting for my return so that I could deliver you know, my cookware to me. And so as soon as I got back to the UK and I told him, okay, I'm back to the UK. When is my cookware going to arrive? You know, I kept on pestering him. So, so we had an interesting conversation and, and I shared, um, you know, part of reasons why I extended my stay. So I would um, start by, okay, sometime last year, early last year, before I came into the UK, um, my my dad was booked for he was booked for a, a minor surgery that was high near. So this was actually his first surgery in his entire lifetime. He has never had a surgery. My dad has we've always told my dad that he's always been blessed with good health. You know, despite what he's been eating, he eats what he likes, you know, but then, you know, he never had health issues. My mom was the one who was having health issues from time to time. You know, and um, so he was booked for this um, surgery and it was necessary for him to have a thorough checkup done before going for the surgery. And most of his um, test results were okay, were, were perfect. You know, well, like, in fact, we're surprised. We're surprised at his age. He, he's, you know, there was no, the only result that, you know, was uh, a bit I was concerned 
I was concerned about was the PSC. I, I know I didn't share this bit. I didn't share this bit with um, with with Mr. Tony, but I'm just bringing it bringing it up. So the the PSA was a bit off the charts, just slightly off the charts, and then I didn't know what PSA was all about. So I started, you know, I'm usually curious about these things when I see something that is not within. So I just go on the web and read about it. And and I told my brother, because I shared the test results with him. My brother, is he's a medical doctor. He's a gynecologist. So I shared it with him and I, and I told him, okay, this is the last result that was released. And... It's showing that it's a bit off. Is it not something that, you know, so he felt, if we just felt, okay, that it's not bad for his age, you know, all other results are okay. So we shouldn't worry about it, you know, so we didn't see it as a red flag at that time. And now uh, he went for the surgery and it was successful. Everything went well and, um, and he was recovering over time and, um, while I was there before my return, I came across this. I came across this um, <clears throat> audio that was shared on one of the, you know, the WhatsApp group. I usually don't read messages. You know, I have a lot of WhatsApp groups and most times I don't, I lose track of the messages, but I just came across this audio that talked about, you know, someone was sharing a story about, um, you know, um, prostate, how, you know, the dad had prostate cancer and, and um, the, the remedy they applied. She, she talked about um, the use of sour soap. Now, I've always known about sour soap fruits. I've always known about sour soap fruits. That sour soap fruits is um, has health benefits. That it it is it has um, anti carcinogenic properties. I've always known about that because uh, you know I came across it on the web and I read about it. But one thing about this story, the interesting aspect of the story was that because I've had people use <clears throat> sour soap. One thing is using it, applying it. Another thing is, I think maybe, you know, how, you know, what to do in order to cope the, you know, the root cause. So, um, because I've had people take sour soap while they were ill, they lost their loved ones and they said they did everything possible. They, you know, they even took sour soap and everything, but yet it, it still didn't work. So the interesting aspect of this um, audio was that, okay, um, apart from taking the sour soap, he needed to cut off a lot of things. He needed to change his diet completely. So I found this audio interesting and I saved it. I just saved it, you know, I just saved it because I, I don't know why I did that. I, I just saved it on my phone. And that was early last year. So I returned to the UK and then sometime in um, July, Sometime in July, um, a friend of mine um, in the U.S., um, we spoke. We hadn't talk, talked in a long time, and she called me, and, you know, she confided in me and told me that, oh, her dad has been having health challenges, and, um, you know, he's had a surgery before, and he had prostate cancer. He had a surgery before, and it came back, and now they're talking about booking him for chemotherapy. So, um, and she said, oh, somebody suggested to them, you know, sour soap and all that. And there's this audio, there's this information that someone talked about it. And, for, you know, she, for some reason she can't find it. She's looking for how to get it. And I told her, okay, there is an audio that I actually have on my phone. Um, I don't know if that is what you're talking about, but I'll share it with you. And I sent it to her. And... Um, she said, oh, yes, this is it. This is what she's been looking for, you know. So um, that was in July. And then sometime in August, um, end of August, August, September, um, my eldest brother, who is a doctor, he came to Nigeria because he's, he's based in Saudi. He came to Nigeria for a short vacation and he took my dad to the hospital I didn't even know, I didn't have a clue that he was experiencing, he had health challenges. For some reason, he kept it to himself. He didn't even, my mom didn't even know about it. It was only my eldest brother. So they went to the hospital, he did a check and, uh, um, and that was when my brother called me. He called me and uh, I was in the UK then. He called me and then he told me that, okay, you know that our dad 
he's he's been having health issues and you know he's he started he had he started experiencing symptoms you know he was you know had frequent um passing urine quick frequently and um and after some time he started seeing blood in his urine and had at that, at that point in time you know i was i was you know i was shocked i was surprised and and he when the test result came out the psa result came out he shared it with me and the psa was 33 at that time which was wow. unbelievable and and then i mentioned this and i said at the time this thing was off the charts that was actually a red flag how did we get here you know so i was really um <clears throat> at that point in time i was I was so so disturbed. I didn't, you know, I was just thinking, <laughs> you know, I was just thinking of what to do at that point in time. And um my brother was already getting ready to return back to his station. And he said, What we're gonna do is okay, he needs to, because they were my parents are in Delta State, that he needed to okay, move them to Lagos, where he would do um proper test and diagnosis since this is the, you know, the initial stage, he just did a PSA, they had, the doctor had said he needs to do a biopsy and we decided that, okay, it's better for him to have it, have this done in, in Lagos where at least to some extent we have some, we, you know, we have some um, level of confidence that, okay, the Lagos will be better to handle this, you know, so, and, um, okay, so I was, um, I was I was greatly disturbed and I just you know I started thinking okay what can we do I was away I was not around and hey, we're just three my we're just three I just I've got two brothers so my other brother is in Lagos and then um, so at that point in time I just started thinking what do I I think at that time I actually started learning some things on nutrition and I actually had a one-on-one -on -one, uh, call with Mr. Tony, you know, on the essence of, of you know, eating right and all that. So, and um, so I, I then remembered, I then remembered this soursop thing. And I, I was just thinking, how do I go about this whole thing? And I remember that I shared this with my friend. So I gave my friend a call and I spoke to her on the call and I asked her, um, the audio I shared with you, did you try, did you try the remedy? How is your dad? How is he? Is he getting better? And she told me, oh, she told me, yes, that he's actually, actually seeing some improvement and that his PSA had dropped, you know, had dropped. Remember that he had a surgery before and he came back. And, you know, his PSA was increasing again. So she said, oh, his PSA had dropped, you know, within two weeks. And I told her that I didn't even have a clue that my dad was equally experiencing the same thing. And my dad's PSA was way, way off, you know. So um, we, and she encouraged me and she said, oh, no, you have to do something. You have to do something. He has to change you have to make him change his diet. You have to, you know, I was just thinking of how I was going to do it and how I was going to convince him because it's really difficult to make them believe that, you know. And when I mentioned it to my eldest brother, who is, who is, who is a doctor, he said, you know, we are still in the early stage. We are still trying to diagnose and um, let's not dive into this. It's too early, you know. But then I said, uh, we, I don't think we should wait until the diagnostic report is out. Whatever we can do now, let's do it because we already seen the same. We already we were we are already seeing the symptoms. The symptoms is an indication that you know it may be cancerous. And so I, when I was here, I had to make arrangements. I spoke with my dad and I told him, okay, this you have to do. You know, you need to cut off. You need to. You need to. The things that you're used to eating, you need to start taking more of uh, proteinous uh, meals, fiber. You need to cut off carbohydrates. You, you need to, and I tried making an arrangement, you know, with someone who helped me to get the sour soap fruits, the sour soap fruits, 
we had the soursop leaves because um, we actually had the tree in 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 you know at our at our compound in in Benin because my parents were previously based in Benin before before they moved to Delta State. Unfortunately, they couldn't move with the tree, and that tree was as a result of when I heard about soursop years back, and I decided to get the fruits and I made sure uh, it was planted. And it grew up and it started bearing fruits. But people didn't really know the value of it. My dad wasn't even taking it. My parent, you know, sometimes the fruits, will, you know, you get the fruits and then we actually <laughs> give them out. So, um, so back to the, the story. So my mom took some leaves. She took a lot of the leaves while they were moving. She took the leaves, you know, when they moved, relocated to Delta State and got some soursop fruits and he was now taking um the the soursop was made into smoothies into 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 smoothie which he was taking with his meals and he cut off carbohydrates completely you know we were we needed to you know he needed to start before even getting the starting the diagnostics. So they actually started while they were in, Benin, um, in Delta State before they moved to Lagos. So when they got to Lagos, at that time, I decided to travel. I decided to travel because he was actually struggling with it. He was struggling with it. He, you know, he was, you know, he was like, you know, he can't continue eating like this. He's, he's losing energy. He's losing weight. My mom complained that he was losing weight. He was losing energy because he wasn't taking car carbohydrates, you know, the things that he liked to eat. So I had to encourage him as much as possible. I even went as far as, in fact, he almost even um, <laughs> my eldest brother and I, actually, um, we had an argument about this. And he said, you know what, Vivian, I, I, I'm not sure you, I, I'm not sure this is, we're doing the right thing, you know, that um, um, why are we punishing, why are we punishing our dad? He, you know, we're in, let's not, like, we have to be careful in trying to solve a problem. Let's not cause more problems. And I said, well, we're not causing problems as such. We're basically just changing his diet. You know, what we're doing is not um, medicinal. We're just changing his diet. And, you know, in the meantime, while we, while he is still going to the hospital, he's undergoing the diagnosis. So, and uh, I had to convince him. And in fact, I went as far as even getting my friend's dad to speak to him because it was better for him to, you know, he had his own experience. And I think it kind of helped in encouraging him. So um, so he continued. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. I don't want to stop you in the flow, but why would you and your brother be conflicted? What, what, is, what profession is your brother in? <laughs> so that people know. <laughs> So, yeah, so my brother, he's a medical doctor. He's a, he's a medical doctor. And um, when I told him about, when I told him about this um, remedy, he said, you know what, there are a lot of things on social media. You don't know, you don't know what is, what is valid. You don't, he said, uh, there are a lot of things on social media. This thing is not scientifically proven. You know, he, he, he. He, he said, he said, um, um, there's no need diving into this, trying to punish, you know, trying to punish our dad, depriving him of what he, he wants to eat and he's losing weight. He's losing, you know, he's not gaining energy and, you know, so, um, well, we were right. always having this conflict and, and he actually suggested that I should, and I told him, I said, okay, this is not just about social media. Now my friend's dad, is on this and they're seeing improvements. So my own friend has told me that it, this is actually working. And he suggested, okay, why not um, get your friend's dad to speak to, to speak to our dad. And so I had to, you know, call my friend up and, you know, plead with her. And one thing about this is that a lot of people, you know, people don't actually not comfortable sharing you know, sharing, you know, their health issues, you know, it's people, a lot of people are quiet about these things. But the thing is, if you don't share information, you know, you never know 
you never know the the life that you you be you know there are people out there that actually need the same information and there are people out there that are ignorant of these things and so i had to make her understand the reason why i needed her dad to speak to and i i was opportune to speak to him on the phone and he agreed to do that so i made an arrangement set up a call he spoke he spoke with my dad they were in lagos then and um sorry at the time they got to lagos he did another psa test because he had to start all over again so he first of all did a psa test and at that time it was 17. okay from where from, where? from 33 from 33 from 33. Okay. so okay. Half, the psa come down to half yeah yes 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 that was about a half okay. so at that point you know we were still not certain if it was as a result of his diet or perhaps maybe the test he did in delta state in asaba was not accurate we're not sure you know so we're still okay from 33 to 17. So I persuaded my dad to still continue because he was really, really struggling. So at that point, um, at that time, I started contemplating I did, contemplating on traveling to, to Nigeria. And thank God I was flexible at that time. So I was able to, and I had a return ticket. I didn't know when I was going to visit Nigeria. I just fixed the date, a random date. That was around October. So my plan, my plan was to move that date until when it was convenient. But I found it necessary for me to make use of that return ticket. And I decided it was a last minute decision for me to travel to Nigeria because I felt that I needed to be with them to make, you know, to, to see him through this. So um, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't the same with me, not around even though I tried as much as possible to do what I could from here, but it wasn't the same. And it was just my elder brother there. Right. And um, so when we saw the result, it was 17. At that time he was booked for the biopsy. He was booked for, scheduled for the biopsy. So he had the biopsy done. And um, um, so I traveled, I traveled down to Nigeria. I didn't even tell them that I, I was coming. I got to the airport, I arrived at the airport in Lagos, and that was when I called my mom and I told her, okay, you know what, I'm around and I'm coming home. You know, they didn't quite understand what I was talking about. They thought I was still in the UK. So I told them I'm around, I'm actually at the airport in Lagos and I was coming. So I got there, I arrived at home and uh, <clears throat> they were really surprised. They, was, they, were, they couldn't believe it that I came around, you know, so... So at that time, so we were expecting the biopsy results to be out. I think it came out the following day or two days later. And um, the result, oh, sorry, sorry, uh, pardon me. The result actually came out at the time I was traveling. The result, the biopsy result was out and it actually um, indicated that it was prostate cancer. So, and that was before I, traveled so when i got arrived i got there and at that point they needed to take a decision the doctor had given options of you know two options he said the major surgery was out of the way because of his age my dad is in his early 80s so he said because of his age major surgery was out of the way and he gave two options uh, one option was a minor surgery uh, which was removal of the testes and then the other one was okay for him to um you know take injections and he that, that injection has to be continuous, almost like a lifetime thing. It has to be taken in every three months. So um, I wasn't really in line with, you know, the minor surgery because I knew that we were already on, you know, remedy. And I, I was very positive that, you know, his diet, the change of um, changing his diet was actually helping, you know. So he did a second uh, PSA test after about um, two or three weeks, because it took some time for the biopsy result to, to be released. So at the time we needed to take the decision of whether he was going to go for the minor surgery or the injection. Um, at that time, this, the 
that the third PSA result he took um, was released and his PSA was 10. Right. His PSA was 10 at that time. Right. You know, so, and, um, so and uh, well, I didn't want to influence his decision on what he was going to do, either the surgery or, you know, or the injection. But my opinion, I just made my opinion known that I would rather he go for the injection. He they shouldn't be in a hurry to go for the surgery for the, you know, for the surgery, no matter how minor, I mean, how simple it is. So he decided eventually because he saw results in what we're doing and he was encouraged. Mm. That kind of boosted his morale. Though he was struggling with, you know, the, the, the diet thing, but he was seeing results. You know, we would actually have seen quicker results if he was taking it consistently. So the thing is, if he was taking the, because remember he was eating mostly proteins, he was e eating mostly proteins. He would take um, sour soap in the mornings. He would take the sour soap leaves, the tea, you know, we would boil the leaves and he would take that in the morning as tea. Um, there, is, there is sour soap tea now, in fact, you know, it exists. So he would take that in the mornings. And then in, 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 for his breakfast, he would take, um, he would take, the sour soap was like pulp. You know, when it's blended, we would remove the seeds and blend it into smoothie and he would take it like pulp. So for his breakfast, he would take akara and uh, pulp. And then in the afternoons, he would take beans with fish. We cut off um, meat, you know, he would take beans with fish and with some veggies, you know, with it. And he would take the sour soap um, smoothie. And in the evenings, he would take moi moi, you know. So when he started, he was taking the sour soap three times um, daily. But after two, three days, um, you know, because it's, 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 it's a detox, right? So he, he, you know, it was actually making him more comfortable. He was, um, he was stooling, you know, so he decided to stop and he was taking it once every day. So, 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 so the result, the progress was actually slow. You know, it would have been shorter if he was actually taking it, you know, three times daily. So he continued that way. So when we started seeing results, I had to persuade him, you know what, you need to take this at least twice. At least twice. If we want to see quicker, you know, quicker results. And so he got encouraged and he started taking it twice. And in between, we would, um, at that time, I was actually dialing into the call for on Saturdays to get information about, you know, healthy eating, and uh, if you remember, um, Sharon, at that time, I had inquired about, while I was in the UK, I was actually inquiring about, okay, how I could place an, if it were possible to um, place an order for a large volume of, of food, like moi moi, yeah. I remember I made that inquiry while I was in the UK. You know, it was for that reason. And that was how I got to know about Best Food Clinic. And... Um, when I went there, I saw that, okay, it was more of like, like a, a meal, like a piece meal. And I, I was requesting for volume, you know, like volume, something that would take them. So yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. To ease off, to ease off the, the stress, the, okay. <laughs> the body, because it's really not easy having to prepare those things, you know, having those things. Up. So it was challenging for him, but, um, he he got encouraged when we started seeing results. So at the time, he made the decision. He decided to go for the injection. Mm -hmm. uh, he decided to go for the injection. And my mom too was of the opinion that he shouldn't go for the surgery. He should go, you know, he should go for the injection, you know. And I know that my <laughs> my eldest brother, you know, of course, for the, they would feel that, oh, but the surgery is a one-time thing. You do it once and for all, and you don't bother yourself about any other thing. But the injection is something that is going to be continuous. 
you know, for, for, for even for a lifetime. But I told my dad, I told my dad, I said, I don't believe that you're going to take this injection for a long time because we are seeing results. I believe that over time, you're going to stop taking that injection. In fact, you may not even necessarily take the second injection, you know, and um, my dad was positive about it and he decided to, to, you know, to go for the injection. And so he had his first injection and, um, well, I mean, while he was getting his medical treatment, we were also addressing the, the root cause. And one thing I picked from that audio that was shared was that, you know, taking something to address a situation, you know, treating it is one thing, but addressing the root cause is very important. You don't want to be eating, you don't want to be Try, you know, you're trying to treat something and at the same time, you're now eating something that is encouraging the mm. growth of, you know. So I, what, the interesting part of that, remember I said that, yeah, I heard about sour soap, that people had used sour soap in the past and it didn't work. But one thing about this video, this audio was that, you know, I got to understand that, okay, cancer cell, cancer cells, they strive in sugar environments. So you want to, cut off that scenario where those cells will be growing, that will, anything that will promote the growth of those cells. So as you're killing it, you're trying to kill it, you're, you know, as you're trying to kill it, you're also trying to, you know, curb the growth as much as possible, cut off, don't feed those cells. So in fact, I had to explain this to my, I'm not a medical person, I'm not a nutritionist, but I just based on information and things that I learned, I had to even tell my dad, I said, this is the reason why you do. You can't be eating carbs. You can't be eating what you used to eat. You just need to avoid it for a while. You know, let's see results. So, so he had his first injection and, um, and uh, because normally, I mean, because I was around, they had extended their stay in Lagos and my presence helped a lot because I had to, you know, and he was taking a lot of water. He needed to be drinking a lot of water. It was very important. And I made sure my dad was, so he, he my mom used to complain that he doesn't drink a lot of water. And my mom, there's a limit to what my mom can do. But with me around, I made sure you know, he would, I would put those bottles out, you know, I got alkaline water for him. I made sure I would put those bottles right in front of him and make sure he finishes those bottles of water a day. Sometimes he wouldn't even drink, he would take half of it. And before he goes upstairs to sleep, you know, I would tell him, no, you can't go to sleep now. You have to drink this first. You know, I would insist. Sometimes he had cheat days, like when he's when I'm not around, he would probably go into the fridge and maybe grab something. Maybe if there was bread, I tried as much as possible to ensure that there was no bread in the in the house, you know. So um, and also one thing in between, sometimes tomatoes would blend tomatoes. The you know the the juice, the smoothie, tomato smoothie. I would give to him to drink from time to time, you know, mm -hmm. so he was on this. And then I made sure, you know, um, dairy products. I got mostly almond, almond milk was, he was taking almond milk most of the time, you know, cut off, he cut off. I made sure he cut off anything that would, you know, that mm -hmm. would, yeah. you yeah. know, that would encourage, you know, we didn't just, I didn't just, you know, at some point, they felt I was overdoing things. My brothers felt I was, um, you know, overdoing, you know, I was, they told me, you're going too far with this thing. Don't you think you're overdoing it? <laughs> so, but um, I was encouraged because we were seeing results. And my parents were also, they were, they were seeing results. Everyone was seeing results. So it continued along that line. And um, before they traveled back, three weeks later, um, I insisted he should take another um, test and um, before they travel back. And uh, when the result was released, his PSA was down to 5.3. Yeah. That was from 10 to 
Mm -hmm. Now that was close to, we're getting close to the normal range because the normal range is zero to four. So mm -hmm. I traveled back to Delta State. I was mm -hmm. actually supposed to come back to the UK, but I just felt that was in November. So mm -hmm. I just felt, okay, you know what? I can still do, I can still do what I'm doing from, from Lagos. Mm -hmm. And moreover, December is around the corner. So I might as well just stay on till, yes. till yes. after the first leave period. Yes. So um, I traveled in December. I yes. traveled home in December. He was still, he was still um, taking what he was taking every day, mm -hmm. and um, and um, so before I traveled, I asked him to take another test. Mm -hmm. You know, and when when he the result was out, he called me. He was excited in fact he was like oh he said oh guess what my result is the result is 1.1.7 oh wow fantastic 1.7 so we we're all so excited and we we're like oh my god this is you know this is unbelievable and even my brother my eldest brother was like oh thank god we are seeing results you know my and there was a comment he made he said mm -hmm. i said i told him i said you see that this is actually working and he said don't forget he also he's also taking injections <laughs> okay. and i said and i said well well i know that before he started he started the treatment we we already we, he was on this and we we're seeing results yeah. at least so yeah. you know so so when i traveled i traveled home and uh, spent some time and gradually, gradually, we started introducing some other thing. Okay, he was taking oats. He was taking. He would take oats. He would take veggies with his meals so that he would not just. It's not just beans, proteins all the time. But he would, you know, where everything was with moderation. Right. He had some cheat days. He had some cheat days, and and I would tell him, you know what, that you shouldn't really be taking this. And he said, I have been deprived of this for a long time. You guys should just let me be at least one time. It's not going to kill me. And I will permit him. Uh, mm -hmm. During the first leave period, you know, of course, it was, yeah. it was, you know, we allowed him to enjoy what everyone was <laughs> enjoying. So, yeah, so I spent some quality time with them and I returned. I returned to the UK um, in February and I asked him, I told him, I said, I told him, you know what? It's sorry. I forgot to mention that he was booked for his second injection in January because it's meant to be three months, but he hadn't done a PS. He hadn't done a PSC test. So we didn't know what it was at that point, but I was, I was convinced that it had actually dropped to zero point something. So, mm -hmm. but he, we hadn't done it, but he still took the injection and I remember the doctor saying, asking him, oh, why did you decide to go for the injection? Why don't you just go for the minor surgery? It's just simple. You just, you get, you get discharged the same day and you don't have to worry about taking this injection all the time. You know, there are people, he, and he told, you know, he said you, you, this injection is something you have to keep taking for a long time. And in some cases, you know, and when we told him that, oh, his last PSA result was 1.7 and he said, wow. And he said, oh, he said, Wow, you you are really responding fast to this to the treatment. He didn't know what um, <laughs> yeah. what we're actually doing. I mean, so and um, to them, they we don't know because they don't know much about nutrition. So they'll just tell you to them. They'll tell you, oh, just keep living your life, and we treat this, and you go back to you know you can continue living your life. But the thing is, the truth is that. If that's the reason why some of these things come back, if you don't address the root cause, it's not going to help. So healthy eating, we cannot undermine the benefits of eating right, yeah. you know. And mm -hmm. and that was why I had this interest in nutrition, you know, what one should be eating. It's a lesson for me also. Uh, we shouldn't take anything for granted. Um, you know, as at the time, his PSA result was off the charts, a bit off the charts when he was booked for the high surgery. At that time, that was a red flag. Mm -hmm. Would have actually done something about it. But we, 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 we you know, we over, it was an oversight. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's actually a lesson for me that, you know, 
one shouldn't take anything for granted. It is necessary to do a check, med check. And if anything is off the chart, that is the time for us to, to act, yeah. you know, to act and start, you know, knowing, you know, cutting down certain things, you know, living a healthy lifestyle. So the last result he took was, um, the last test he did was, uh, that, that was about three weeks ago. And um, he told me that the PSA had dropped to 0 0.4. Wow, fantastic. So, um, in fact, so that's practically, you know, that's, yeah. it had, it had cleared, you know, and I told him, you know, we're all excited. And I told him, I told him, I said, you know what? You can't go back to the way you used to eat before. You just have to continue. Mm -hmm. um, yes, everything is going to be with moderation. Mm -hmm. know, know that, okay, we, you haven't taken, you haven't taken much of carbs, but you know, it has to be with moderation. Mm -hmm. We have to be eating, you, have, you know, you have to be eating right. You, you know, the, we can't change the, the, we can't go back to the, you know, the previous lifestyle, you know. So this has actually, it's a, it's, it's a learning point for everyone, everyone, mm -hmm. you know, and it's necessary to, from time to time, monitor, you know, a health conditions in order yeah. to know, you know, how to address it. So, yeah. So, Fantastic. <laughs> thank you. Thank so, you for your story. Thank you for your yeah. journey. I mean, I think some key things that uh, I would say, what are the key things you would say? Obviously, you've got the sour sup leaf is one. Um, I think you mentioned the fact that uh, you eliminated some of the things that were the cause, the root of the problem. That's another. Stop. You stop feeding the disease, <laughs> yeah, and you started feeding the body with something that can ex expel the things. That, so, what are the key things? Would you rec like if someone says, "Okay, give me five five points um, to follow"? What would be the five points? Um. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. What I would say is that. Um, First of all, I, I think it's necessary it's necessary to like I mentioned, it's necessary to monitor our health conditions, you know, from time to time. Um my dad my dad hadn't, you know, like I said, we 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 were always telling him that he, he was blessed with, you know, good health. You know, but we didn't know that you know, for the first time he he had a surgery, yeah, and we didn't even know what was coming, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one thing led to the other. Because he was put for a surgery, he 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 did he did a med check, and because he felt his health was always okay, mm -hmm. um, he hadn't done it, you know, med check for for some time. So, this is something that we cannot um, take for granted. Mm -hmm. From time to time, we need to be, you know, we need to do a med check to be sure that our parameters are within normal range, and then. You know, secondly, if anything is off the chart, and we don't have to wait until something happens, we need we need awareness. You know, the uh, awareness is key. Awareness is key. Information is, you know, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. We need to anything that you know that is off the chart. We need to investigate. We need to we need to address it mm -hmm. as early as possible. Because I've learned one thing. I think part of reason. You have cases where people go into the go to the hospital and then the doctor will tell them, Oh, you have three months to leave, or you have six months to leave. Imagine all of a sudden something just comes up, you know, and you're now wondering how this this whole thing come about. And that's probably because we missed what we missed at that point is that we probably were not checking or monitoring our health conditions. Mm -hmm. And maybe something came up and then it wasn't addressed at that stage. But something can be done. It's not too late. Something yes. can be done. This is a scenario where, you know, it already happened and we're able to reverse it. We're okay. able to reverse that, that situation. And it's a learning it's a learning point for all of us. Eating healthy, we cannot un undermine undermine the benefits of healthy eating because it saves you a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble the money you spend in hospital the mm -hmm. hospital bills you know all the things you had to do mri 
uh, mm. biopsy, the checks he needed to do. So imagine if he needed to go for the treatment, you know, chemotherapy, all that. Mm. It's it costs a lot of money. Well, you can actually save that by preventing it. Prevention is key. So healthy eating is is very 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 important. Um, it you know we are being proactive. Um, we are being proactive and learning. You know, learning these things, eating right. You know, it's 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 very very in, important. Um, what else do I have to say now? <laughs> no, no, it's okay. so you said you said a lot. I mean, I, I just want to summarize uh, some things that you said for those of the people that might have just come on. Is obviously um, finding out the PSA was thirty seven. Uh, 37 at first, 33. Right? from 33. 33, 33. 33 so, went down to 17. Aha, uh -huh, so that's where I'm getting the seven. So, so 33, but when he goes down to 17, you've changed his diet. I take it at that point, yeah. you've changed his diet, you've introduced uh soursop leaf at that point, yeah, you've eliminated some of the bad stuff like the meats, and you've increased now the fiber, yeah, and and you've obviously had some fish also on that, and that's not it. For the omega three, yeah, good. Okay. Good. But then after that, obviously, from seventeen now, that's a big jump. Yeah, from seventeen, it went down to ten. Is it? Am I right? And yes. that's also because you consistently carried on with the, the with the nutrition and the diet, and the the, the, the and it, you kept all the bad stuff out, even though there were cheat days. <laughs> like you said, it could have been faster. Then yeah, from ten. Fast. From ten, it went down to how much? So five, 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 five point three, yeah. and then five point three. The rest is history, yeah? yeah. And and then we're here today. So I think um, that's fantastic. Thank you very much for sharing that, um, Sharon. Do you want to say a few words on your side? Do you got? Do you want? Do you have any questions for for Vivian? Um, let me see if maybe Sharon has got um, uh, co-host issues again. Okay, so. Okay, so Sharon, do you want to say anything? I know I've put you on co-host now. Are you not there? You're still not there? Oh, that's strange. Okay, I'm try here now. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I'm here now. Avon, what what oh, what an on. amazing Vivian, 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 Vivian. Sorry, Vivian. <laughs> Vivian, hi, Vivian. Hi, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. What an and what an amazing experience you've shared with us. It's just a phenomenal set of journey that you are currently, you are still going through that journey. But I, I guess for me, it would be at the point of um, you recognizing that all the health issues by diet and by changing what um, your father was eating, you visualize change. Whereas the medical um, staff, including your brother, were actually against it. And I can imagine that um, the, the pressure that that must have put you under because you were determined. And I think your determined allowed you to do what you believed was right, despite what um, other people were saying. You know, we always say that we always take advice from our medical um, professionals and we, we don't write, really fight with them. But um, when you face what you have faced, you actually showed such courage and bravery to do what you've done. And, you know, the greatest thing is that there's a lovely result that you have achieved, you know, to this stage. And I guess, um, can I just ask you, is your father now accustomed to taking the types of food? I know you said he has a cheat day or he can have cheat days. But is he now accustomed to taking and eating that kind of food that you've, you've taken him into? Yes, he has actually adjusted. He has, he, he has adjusted to the new way of eating now. Yeah. He okay. has adjusted. Right. So, I mean, we, you know, like, you know, some things that, for instance, um, things that one, one was used to eating, you know, like the, the pound of, swallow he wasn't taking that for a long time and uh, now he's not taking that frequently and it's mostly oatmeal 
He does wow. now, not 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 pound dough. It's oatmeal now, oatmeal. Even my my mom, you know, because I remember at that time before this whole thing happened, I was used to taking oatmeal. I had actually reduced the rate at which I was taking pound dough. You know, the yam. You know, I was um, because I noticed that each time I had it, I felt too heavy, and sometimes I would have upper abdominal pain. So I started taking the oatmeal and I would buy it and I'll bring it home. And sometimes, you know, they will, my, my, my dad didn't like it. They would just take it once in a while, but now he has, you know, and when I don't, for some reason he was, he didn't like beans before he wasn't eating, you know, as I don't know, as people get older, there are certain things that the things that I remember I used to tell him that, ah, the things that are healthy, you're, you are avoiding them. Now, the, you know, he wasn't, at some point he stopped taking beans. He, he didn't like it. I don't know why, but he has, he, he's, he's in love with it now. <laughs> he's taking, he's taking, he's taking it a lot. He's, you know, and um, yeah, he's, he's taking more fiber, proteins, veggies. So everything is with moderation. Everything is with, you know, moderation now. Right, fantastic, fantastic. I think there's a question, Sean. Um, but, uh, uh, but well, sorry, did you see the question? No, oh, it's um, Vivian. Oh, yes, it's just um, uh, Pastor Peter is thanking you for sharing your dad's journey to recovery. He wants to ask you what form specifically do you eat the sour sop, it's SOP, as well as the leaf? So that's the fruit I, I take in. Yeah. Which I believe the, the fruit is not in yeah, season is. at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's not actually. Yeah, it's it's not. This is not the season. Yes, I agree. This is actually not the season. So, uh, what I <laughs> because I was determined to to source it from wherever, <laughs> you know, um, I I actually had. I actually got someone who was able to get get it from me from you know from the food market um, because my parents were my parents were in, you know when they were in Delta State so I had someone in um, Anambra State who who was able to you know I discussed with him while I was here in the UK and um, um, he was able to get it from the food market. Now what we used to do is I mean he would, would get a lot of it and. Initially, we started with the unripe ones. The unripe ones. It's, they're actually more effective than the ripe ones. The unripe ones, you know, it's strong at that time. It's not soft. So we started with the unripe ones and we would remove, you know, take out the seeds, remove the seeds and blend it. It's quite, it's hard when you're blending it. So, you know, you need to, you need to use a spoon a powerful blender to blend it. So the unripe one, he was struggling with it a lot. He was struggling with it. The unripe one is not as smooth as, you know, the ripe, the ripe ones. You know, the ripe, because the ripe one is yeah. sweet, we're trying to avoid that, you know, okay. sugary. Yeah. So he started with that um, initially, and he wasn't really liking it. He was struggling with it. He was, mm -hmm. he was struggling with it. And uh, but later on, what I did, I... I we started going for the the soft ones. We would get them, we would get them, and we we'll allow them to get soft a little bit, and we would blend it, and it, it's you know it's then like a uh, smoothie, you know, like pulp. So he preferred it because it was it was you know it was Pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so he would take it, he would take it like pulp, you know, with his meal, along with his with his meal. And the sour soap leaf, uh, the sour soap leaves, he would take it first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, Uno will boil some leaves um, with uh, usually what is recommended, like, okay, three, three leaves, uh, three large leaves, boil it in a glass of water. But what we used to do is that we would, we would boil a lot of it. So we have like it, we have a, um, a volume, large volume of it, and we would 
preserve it so anytime he wants to take it we would uh, heat it up and then he would drink it first thing in the morning before he's because he loved taking tea my dad loved drinking tea first thing in the morning he would take cups of tea like lipton tea and uh -huh, that was something that i he cut off as well you know the the black lipton tea you know, I stopped him from taking it. No oh. more, yeah, anything that contained the caffeine, no. You know, he stopped taking that. So that was what he was drinking in the morning, taking in the morning as his tea, before he would take his breakfast um, with a sour soup uh, smoothie. In the afternoon, he would take, um, you know, his... Uh, you know, he would take beans along with fish and uh, sometimes we'll add veggies to eat and then he'll take it with the sour soup smoothie mm -hmm. as well. And in the evenings, he would take, um, he would take more and more. So remember that he was strictly on proteins because we needed to see results at that time. Now that he's back to normal, you know, we're introducing other things like, okay, started taking oats, oats, other foods but everything now is with moderation you know everything now is with moderation he can't go back to taking you know those yeah carbs pando no more oatmeal it's now oatmeal it's now um the rice if it takes the rice the healthy you know the healthy type of rice and, uh, um yeah carrots tomatoes the healthy, the healthy stuff, basically veggies, yeah. And like you said, avoid all these things, yeah, extra things. Okay, so to avoid and then milk. As for yeah. the milk, no more dairy, no, no more dairy products. No, plant based. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, there, there. It, it, it can be expensive. It's a expensive. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> expensive. Well, to people, it's expensive. But in the long run, you 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 it, you know it it pays off because, um, I mean, and as well, of course, actually at that time, that was what even made me uh, request for you know the <laughs> cookware as well. <laughs> actually. He requested for it for placed an order for for them to be making use of. I remember when they came to Lagos. Um, when they came to Lagos, at the time I got my set of cookware. Um, for some reason, I still had, I still had the previous ones, like the small, the small pots, like non-sticky pots. I still had them in the cupboard. And um, while I was in the UK, and um, I made sure, I asked my mom, okay, what are you using to cook? <laughs> what, what are you using to cook? <laughs> so my mom said, when she mentioned that she loved, she, she was used to taking the, the small non-sticky pots to make, uh, you know, you know, food. And so I told her, no, please, no more. <laughs> make sure you use the new, you know, <laughs> the, the new cookware <laughs> that is there. The yeah exactly you know so um, yeah so you, so you use salad master to help do all your all your food <laughs> for them because yeah, i noticed yeah. i noticed you bought salad master in nigeria again and then you bought salad master in the uk <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay but i mean most part of it was most part of it was what he was eating right. you know, the, the healthy eating good. it was um it was a good thing we tackled it at at that stage, we didn't wait until the diagnostic report was, the result was out before we now started addressing because, you know, you remember that my, my, my brother had kicked against it. He said, don't you think this is too early to start doing this? We haven't even arrived at the results or what it is. And I told yeah. him, we don't have to wait till then. Let's see what, let's do what we can. So that yeah. by the time he's receiving treatment, it doesn't stop him from doing what he needs to do in the hospital. But let us do what we can, right. you know, changing his diet, changing what he's eating, cutting off, you know. So okay. I, 
above all, I, I I thank God for the I thank God for the for the for the wisdom, divine wisdom. Because one thing one thing is getting this information, and another thing is acting on it. You mm. may have the options thrown to you, but at the end of the day, you may be making the wrong decisions if mm-hmm. you know if you're not guided. You know, wow. I mean, mm-hmm. of praying about it as well as doing what I needed to do. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much, Vivian. Uh, that was very, very, very. Ah, uh, it's it's got to be one of the shows of the season. Listening to you going through your journey, and it's natural. It's, you're just going through the journey, just going through it. Um, the the key thing, and I think you've heard it on my shows before, anyway. And we, when we did a one to one too, you mentioned that. Uh, but you know, we have a choice. We can keep on feeding the disease, and the disease can keep growing. And if you allow the disease to grow and grow and grow eventually it takes over the body and if it takes over the body guess what the disease will have a party inside your body and when it has a party inside your body what does it who does it invite it invites its friends and the friends are other diseases that you don't want so the good news in terms of Vivian's approach I love the approach the approach is get rid of the things causing the problem and increase the things that could improve improve the condition and hopefully get rid of the whole thing so we got rid of the meat the dairy and we brought in the foods that can help the system and the fiber and then also we now had the soursop leaf so and one thing that one thing that um, vivian also said to me that was very very interesting when i met vivian she said you know some people use soursop leaf and they say it doesn't work now the difference between those that allow soursop leaf that soursop leaf works for them and their cancer, and the ones that it doesn't, is because you have to sacrifice some things. Also, you have to. You, it's not a pill. You have to get rid of the things causing the problems. Otherwise, all you're doing is neutralizing what soursop leaf is doing. If you're still eating meat and you say I'm eating soursop because it's anti-cancer, yeah, I hear that so many times that somebody's eating this because it's is anti this but they're eating something that's causing it and therefore they neutralize the medicine that could cure them yeah so, and that's the key thing so i think on a, I'll, I'll give you the last few words vivian on what i've just said because i think we're going to close the show as soon as you finish because uh, we took over the time but it was worthwhile yeah <laughs> over to you vivian. yeah okay um just last few words Last few words, just last few words you want to say. Okay, last few words. Okay, yeah. um, well, <laughs> so I just want to encourage, I mean, I just want to encourage everyone that um, it's it's not the end of the world if, um, you know, first thing is one needs to be proactive. You know, one needs to be proactive, like I'm, I you know, mentioned, you know, checking, checking from time to time, checking our health conditions. And if anything happens, I mean, it's, it's not the end of the world, really. There are things that can be done. I've always, I've always had this belief that there is, there is no, there is no problem that does not have a solution. You know, the solution is in the solution is in our hands. Everything is created. Everything was created. Everything was created to address whatever situation. So I've always had this, you know, belief and been positive about, you know. In addressing situations. If it if it happens, uh, there is there is there is you there is there is a solution to to every problem, and it's not too late. It's not too late to start. It's not too late to start, and um, you know we we just do what we can based on you know the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Never undermine the you know the power of knowledge. Awareness is key. Um, never undermine the, the the benefits of you know healthy healthy eating healthy eating because it goes a long way it actually goes a long way um to and it helps you stay away stay away from the hospital because i remember during covid people were doing a lot of things uh doing taking doing take, you know taking a lot of natural remedies you know, they were staying away from the hospitals because they didn't want to um <laughs> they were scared of you know getting infected so um yeah we need to be proactive and 
you know, it is also good to, um, a lot of people don't like to share their experiences, stories and all that, but you may be touching, you may be saving a life out there. So I always believe in, you know, sharing mm-hmm. information and um, okay. it'll go a long way to helping mm-hmm. people, their situations. Um, I'd like to say thank you also for sharing because in Nigeria, and in Africa, we don't tend to share these things. And some people, unfortunately, die because we don't share. But by sharing, we're caring, which could save a life. Um, Sharon, do you want to say one th- last few words before yeah. we wrap up? Yeah. Yeah, thank you for a wonderful session and sharing your your very personal journey with us. I'm sure that many people will have taken lots of golden nuggets away from your experience and the knowledge. So thank you. Yeah. Vivian, really appreciate it. Can we also all extend our thank you on our chat? And I'm going to unmute everybody in a second. Before I unmute everybody, guys, you'll be looking. Um, um, unfortunately, Nikkei won't be able Hello. to hear me. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. I said, I, I yes. said before, I, I'm going to unmute everyone so that they can extend their thank you to you and also put it in the chat. Say thank you, okay. Vivian. And then also what I'm going to say also is that if you're looking to get the leaf, let us know. We do have we do have a source for the leaf um, and we can help you with that also. If you're looking at getting food, that's uh, smoothies. We have smoothie remedies also. We also have uh, tea remedies. <laughs> we also have food. So we've, got, we've literally done all the research on that. So we can't share that with you now, but Best Food Clinic and the Healthy Store can help you with that. And in, on that note, I'd like to say thank you very much, Vivian. And I'm going to unmute everybody so that they can extend their thank you. And I'm going to thank everybody else for coming on the show. So thank you, Vivian. Thank you very much.